Hello, welcome back to Coffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. I'm James Pendleton and I'm here to talk through today's uh, biggest news stories relating to the Toffees. Another relatively um, sort of hectic but not hectic day. There's been lots of news flying around but it hasn't been a day where it's like players are getting closer, players at the training grounds, anything like that. It's just a case of Everton being linked with players again. Club players being linked to moves away. And obviously, I think the biggest news of the day looks like the pursuit of El Balal Torre is probably going to come to an end tomorrow. For Richard Marner saying that he's having his medical at Atalanta. It's one of them as we were about it yesterday. We, we can't complain if a player goes to someone like Atalanta who, you know, in the Europa League, which I don't think is a, a huge pull, but they are close to being in the Champions League. Their strike at the minute is being linked with. An eighty million pound move to to Man United or or Paris Saint Germain. So, um, and as I mentioned again yesterday, the lad apparently quite wants to play in in Serie A. So, <clears throat> it's fair enough. And yeah, they're a much more attractive proposition for a player and for a, for a selling club as well. Um, it's just a case that again, as I said yesterday, Everton just have to move on to a new target quickly. Like you know, you want to be sitting here tomorrow and thinking right. You know, you, you look like you know who the next player is going to be, who everything going to look for in that striker position. Will that happen? I don't know. Will we learn lessons? I don't know. But yeah, it's a shame because he looked like a good player. Obviously, it's not confirmed yet, but for Richard Romano said, you know, here we go, pretty much um, putting the final nail in the coffin, certainly as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, I think when he says that, you know what's going down. So um, that's a shame, but. It only came a couple of hours after Paul Joyce said, you know, some people at Everton actually think we are kind of really much still in this race. Other people thought it was over. And, um, yeah, it very much appeared like it was the latter, which is unfortunate. But, as I say, hopefully move on to new targets. Uh, next, Football Insider, again, sort of Peter Rourke saying that there's been loan interest in Mason Holgate from Southampton, Leeds United and Sheffield United. Obviously, Sheffield United... In the Premier League this season, he's a you know, Yorkshire lad, so the links to him and them in Leeds aren't maybe too uncommon. I found the Southampton links a bit strange. I don't think he's a massively um, brilliant defender with the ball at his feet. And obviously, Russell Martin's just taken over there, so you're thinking, you know, he's going to want defenders who can really play, and I'm not sure Mason Holgate's that. He's not a bad defender with the ball at his feet. He's better than somebody, certainly not a kind of specialist in that area, I don't think, anyway. Uh, and I just don't think he's very good. Um, but the rumours are that apparently this summer his contract's gone up to seventy two grand a week, which is just insane money. Like I can't stress enough how <clears throat> a player that hasn't been a first team regular, um, or should I say, a first team regular who is really deserving of a spot for a good three years, he's done seventy two grand a week allegedly. I just find that insane, especially because there doesn't seem to be any criteria. As to why that's gone up to such heights, I assume it's before it's um, appearance related. Maybe it's like if you made a certain amount of appearances by this time, then this would be the summer that contract would go up. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I, I don't know Mason Holloway person. I don't know whether he's somebody who'd kind of happily sit on that money for a year and then leave, or whether you really want to go out and play football. I'd hope it's the latter. And I probably would guess it is, but. Who knows? Um, a loan deal does not do much for Everton. Uh, we kind of need to, to look to sell him. He was one of few players in the squad who, a bit like Damari Gray, who I don't think is particularly good, uh, isn't good enough for Everton, but I think he does have a a, a sellable quality to him because he's he's a decent age, he's versatile enough, uh, and he's okay. But like I said, I don't think he's good enough for what we need and, and certainly for the, the way I think we're going to end up playing anyway. But... That's the case, that's what's happening. Speaking of Sheffield United, we are being linked once again with Daniel Jebison. Um, we were linked with him a couple of years ago. Actually, he scored his first ever goal at Premier League level against us, Sheffield United, and that awful defeat under Ancelotti. Yeah, I mean, people talk about the Ancelotti era a lot, but we lost games like that most weeks. Um, and it was always the players who fell on the sword. I'm, de I'm detracting slightly, but I always found that quite strange. But um, yeah, that was one of those shocking, shocking defeats. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I watched a bit of him last season, and I just think he needs another season that level, championship level. He scored, I think, two goals last year, which 
for a forward who I think's got a bit more to his game, but he's not like a kind of, you know, one of those strikers who it's not about the goals, the Roberto Firmino's of this world, uh, and he certainly isn't a, you know, goals, goals, goals striker. He's somewhere in the middle, but two isn't a great number either, I don't think. And I say, I think he needs another year at that level as a starter. I think Sheffield could well loan him back out again. He is still only 19, which is mad, because we were linked to him, and say, going back two or three years. Um, we've had a long-standing interest but I just don't think it's going to happen. I don't see why we'd go for someone who wasn't going to be Sheffield United's main number nine last year, but would then be good enough to come to Everton. If he could go to the 23s or whatever, that just seems pointless. I don't know. We'll see, but I think that's probably just the case if we inquired earlier on in the window. Allegedly, we've had that strong interest. I'm not sure it's going to get much further than that, and that's fine. I mean, the final bit of news, really... Um, well, we did touch on this yesterday as well, actually, with Sandy Mills going to Oxford on loan, which is fine. I'm meant to be going to an Oxford game, actually, in a couple of months, so I look forward to, to seeing how he's getting on then. Hopefully, he's still in the team and doing well and stuff. Be interested to see position he plays, because I think that's where, you know, I, look, I don't know whether this kid's going to be good enough or not, but is he a right midfield? Is he a centre? Is he a full-back? I mean, we don't really know, because, you know, we had a settled time in the 23s. He was still versatile enough there. He played in the senior squad last summer for a bit. He played here, there and everywhere. I don't know, we'll we'll see, but I say I'm not sure whether he's gonna be up to scratch or not, but um, we'll see what happens. And then say finally the final bit of news that would be in linked with Tete from Shakhtar Donetsk, I believe that's where he is anyway. Um a bit of a strange contract thing. I think he was at Leon last season for a bit when he went to Leicester. I've got major Leicester fan, I don't think he rated him massively, he scored on his debut, I think, or one of his first games against Aston Villa, and then that was kind of it really. Um if it's a free or a loan, it's a right-sided player and it's depth, I'd probably take it, take a risk on it. But, I'm the, again, I'm not too sure because apparently this happened earlier on the window. He was, he was being discussed and talks for a of it today. And then people have been tweeting about, you know, looking at what's the situation with players who are in Ukraine at the minute. Can they just leave? Is it compo? I, I don't know. It, it seems like a bit of a mess to me. I'm not sure we, we should really be getting involved in it. But um, from what I've seen of him, he's okay. I'm certainly not going to be kind of head over heels wanting him and I'm not going to kind of say nah let's leave him because I think he's a position that we need good age I think he's okay as I say a bit of lightweight for the Premier League but I don't know um, we've got so few players who can play on that right side um, as like a definitive out and out right midfielder or right winger depending on what shape we play that um, I don't know it's, it's nice to see a link to someone like that because I think Harrison <laughs> Obviously, Dan Juma, Nonto, they're all left midfielders first and foremost. I know Harrison can play on the right a bit, but um, as far as I'm aware, Tete is out and out on the right. But we shall see. We'll find out what happens, obviously. As I say, hopefully Friday brings a bit more a bit more juice to these stories. They're all a little bit like Everton are looking, we're inquiring, or vice versa. We've lost out on a player or whatever. So we shall see. Let us know down below which of those players you'd be interested in. If else in the squad you want to kind of see moved on, are you happy with the links for happening at the minute? Let us know what you think with all those down below. Make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Nice one.